Okay, in this episode of the Oracle Mobile Application Framework Online Training, we're going to delve into how AMX Pages and AMX Components provide a huge productivity boost to developers in developing their mobile user interfaces. Now, in previous episodes, we covered how, broadly speaking, MAF supports three different types of user interfaces. That is, that of local AMX pages that run inside the device, the mobile device. In turn, local HTML pages that are also deployed and run on the device. Or thirdly, that of remote web pages to the device, commonly referred to as remote URLs. Let's discuss these in more detail. Firstly, local AMX pages provide a component-based framework similar to that proposed by Java Server Faces. The components are designed to massively reduce the amount of programming required by developers in composing pages, providing components that are rich in functionality and data binding capabilities with little programming required. As the components are ultimately rendered using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, this makes them cross-platform compatible a key feature of Oracle's mobile application framework. Another advantage of using AMX over local HTML or raw HTML that the developer has to code themselves, that we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, is with the AMX pages, Oracle takes care of ensuring that the AMX components and the generated HTML rendered that it operates correctly across all supported platforms or even operating system upgrades that break functionality. With pages made up of raw HTML or local HTML pages built by teams by hand, in contrast the responsibility of cross-platform support and consistent behavior and dealing with any bugs introduced by upgrades by Google or Apple is purely the responsibility of the local HTML developers. Yet, Local HTML is also a viable page solution for mobile application framework applications, especially for programmers who are more comfortable with programming raw HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These developers can develop with these technologies rather than using the AMX componentry. Or in other words, developers can literally program from the ground up using standard web markup. Finally, remote URLs or URLs is the third user interface or UI option which allows the application to integrate remote website content into your overall mobile application. This is useful where some of the application content is only available from a remote server in HTML form and we want to embed it as part of our mobile application. Think of it as providing a browser in the application, which you'd be quite familiar with because many mobile applications already do this. Of course, not all remote URLs are suitable for mobile use. They need to be optimized for the limited screen real estate and touch input. Embedding a desktop class website into a mobile application as a remote URL will just be a bad idea. For this set of episodes, we're going to purely focus on the AMX components supported by Oracle's mobile application framework. Firstly, AMX stands for Application Mobile XML a somewhat clumsy way of saying that AMX pages and their components are expressed in XML files, one for each page of your math application. However, before listeners scream death by XML or XML hell, programmers aren't forced to code in XML because as we'll see, the JDeveloper IDE or Clips IDEs provide a rich design time experience for dragging and dropping components from the data control and component palettes. Also a preview mode, and even a property inspector to save developers who are afraid of a little typing in XML from having to write any XML whatsoever. As you will have seen in previous episodes, and we'll again explore in more detail in a moment, an AMX page is owned or attributed to a math feature typically, and can also be bundled in with other AMX pages into a task flow. The AMX pages themselves are composed of one or more AMX components. And this is what makes the mobile application framework a component-based framework. If you're not familiar with the term component-based framework, think about super HTML components where rather than having to build pages one tag at a time, 
say using the HTML table tag where you normally need to use numerous TR and TD tags, a rather tedious programming task. A component-based framework will allow a developer to drop in a super table component that given a data source of columns and rows as an example, will just render the table for the developer at runtime without all that tedious HTML markup. Component frameworks go much further than this. There's a huge amount of functionality they can inject to save developers extreme amount of development time. Currently for Mac, there is over 50 pre-built AMX super components you can use. And this list of components will continue to increase over MAF releases, giving you more options of what to display in your user interface. In terms of the AMX components, they are designed with many goals in mind, such as mimicking the deployed platform standard look and feel. You'll remember that iOS from Apple and Android components look slightly different, such as the checkbox. So Oracle takes care of making sure that the components look native on each platform without you, the developer, having to change the look and feel or your code yourself to mimic this look and feel. Secondly, with this in mind, Oracle also takes care of the cross-device compatibility. So for example, if you had coded your HTML components for iOS 7 in HTML, then ported your application to the Android platform, and the application user interface then broke, for AMX components, Oracle takes that responsibility on board to ensure the components work on all supported platforms. Third, and a very nice thing about AMX components, is if you want to build your own super component comprised out of other AMX components, to have a standard set of components, a standard look and feel across your mobile application, AMX also supports the concept of reusable fragments. For example, if you want it on each page of your tablet application to show at the top of the screen custom information in a set format, say including the name, address, picture and email address, a fragment would be an excellent choice to achieve this. There's also numerous advantages granted to the developer to boost their productivity by using AMX components. First, unlike raw or local HTML, which is typically augmented with lots of JavaScript, for AMX components with their super functionality, this functionality is mostly built into the components such that 99% of the time there is no custom JavaScript required by the developer. Contrast this to a standard HTML page in any application, a huge amount of code is custom JavaScript, thus showing what a large productivity boost AMX components are over regular HTML. Second, in addition, a powerful feature built into AMX components is that of data binding. That is, normally components represent data or visualize data, such as a field a user can read and write to, or a table showing rows and columns, or maybe even a bar graph showing aggregates. All of this is data. With raw or local HTML programming, it is the responsibility of the HTML programmer to write that code and functionality, such as updating data into the actual HTML. This presents a challenge when the data is a separate memory structure, say a Java bean. We have a disconnect between the HTML and data structures. The advanced data binding features of AMX components imply that components can simply be pointed at a data source, such as a Java bean or a Pojo, a web service as example, and the component will happily work with the data source and determine itself how to change what is rendered to accommodate the data. As we'll learn in the following set of episodes, this is accommodated via the use of expression language, an Oracle specific technology, and an Oracle specific technology known as the data control. So what sort of components do we have available to us to use in our AMX pages? Overall, we can divide the AMX components into two sets. The regular AMX components, such as input text fields, buttons and images. And the other set being what we call data visualization tags, which is incredibly cumbersome to say, so we often abbreviate them to DVT controls. DVT controls are components that present data in gauges, graphs, maps, and any component where data is taken from its base text form, then represented in a graphical control. Let's briefly explore some of these components now to give you a flavor what's provided, 
and what we can use to build compelling mobile user interfaces in Oracle's mobile application framework. If we consider the more general AMX components to start out with, let's have a look at a real math application and the different components we can identify from the screens. This application is the HR demonstration application available with all math installations. It's located in your JDeveloper installation under the JDeveloper JDev extensions oracle.math samples.zip file. Simply unzip the samples.zip file, locate the HR directory, and open the hr.jws file in JDeveloper or Eclipse to see this application and explore it and the other sample applications to learn more about math. Obviously, being a HR application, the app is designed to show the employees working for a fictitious shipping company. On the opening screen of the application, beyond the list of employees on the left and the details of Adam Fripp on the right, in terms of AMX components, we can identify command buttons, both iconic and text-based, and related links, much like a hyperlink, but for all intents and purposes are treated the same as a button. We also have numerous text controls to display textual data, such as output text components, shown here for representing read-only data, and elsewhere we can use input text controls for both displaying the data and allowing the user to input data. Beyond text controls, there are selection controls, such as the select one choice, checkboxes, radio buttons, basically where the user has a range of values to select from. Then there are more slightly sophisticated components that are designed to show collections of data, such as the list view, which represents itself as a vertical scrolling list, which the user can flick up and down with their fingers to see individual items represented by the list item control. The list view component is built in with events to load additional rows when required, and as seen is vertical in its display nature. Alternatively, the iterator tag is a free flowing data view tag that will just stamp out its children horizontally or vertically for as large as its data collection is, giving mobile user interface developers the ultimate flexibility they desire by allowing any combination of components to be included for each row in the data collection. In this example, the iterator is stamping out image tags of the employees who report to Adam Fripp. Another category of components is that of layout components, more commonly known as panel components. These components are designed to help you lay out the other components in the page in a standard way, while managing the geometry of the child components such that they grow and shrink and rearrange themselves on the page as you change the orientation of the device, for example. As we can see here, there is an overall panel page component to encapsulate the page. And this specific page uses a number of different layout controls, including a table layout to display rows and cells in a grid-like fashion. Not all components are a vigil in nature. Some components are used to invoke an action or add supplemental behavior to their parent tags. For example, command buttons are often used to invoke a pop-up. Now, rather than you having to write code to do this, AMX allows the UI designer to drop a show pop-up behavior tag on a command button as a child, nominating the pop-up to display. In addition to complete the example, once the pop-up displays, a further behavior tag, close pop-up behavior, can be included in another command button within the pop-up to close the pop-up when invoked by the user, or with no programming required on the developer's part. If we move on from the general AMX components and now look at the data visualization tags or DVT components, we can see things like status gauges, charts such as this set of bubble charts, and even maps. Here a Google map embedded into our application. Now this isn't all the UI components available via AMX. As mentioned, there is over 50 different components which you can choose from. Yeah, this gives you a little taster of what's possible and what a mobile application framework AMX page with its pre-built components looks like. Now let's have a look at how a developer quickly creates a page using AMX, as well as the features that are available to you in the IDE to make your job faster. So here in the JDeveloper IDE, we have a pre-created MAF application workspace. 
In the Application Navigator, you can see the application, its projects, and the Math Feature XML file selected. If we double click the Math Feature XML file, which opens the associated editor, we can see we can then create our first feature in the Create Map Feature dialog. For the purpose of this demo, we'll call the feature Employees. Once accepting the dialog, we can see the new feature Employees listed in the Math Feature XML editor. If we then select the Content tab and the associated File Add button, we can create our very first Math AMX page, which in the associated Create Math AMX page dialog we'll call ListEmployees.AMX. On accepting the changes in the dialog, on returning to the IDE, we note it has created the ListEmployees.AMX page. As we can see in the editor, the list employees.amx page is made up of a number of standard XML tags which represent AMX components of our page. And ultimately, this is the source code of our specific AMX page that we just created. Under taking a quick tour of the IDE to see what tools are available to assist in editing the source code of the page, on the left hand side we can see the structure window, which gives us a hierarchical view of the tags we can see in the source code editor. Alternatively, on the right top side, we can see the component palette. This is automatically filtered to display math AMX components of which we can drag onto our source page rather than writing the components by hand in the editor. In the source code editor, you'll notice that at the bottom of the editor are a number of tabs. These provide different views and aspects of the page you're editing. The preview tab when selected allows you to see a WYSIWYG or a what you see is what you get view of your page representing the components in the AMX XML source code. This allows you to preview the page without having to deploy it to a device. Note within the preview tab you have options to resize the preview pane based on the device screen real estate. This is very useful for working out how your page will render on different devices with limited screen real estates. In addition, you have buttons for flipping the page, orientation from landscape to portrait, so you can see what your page looks like under these different conditions. Returning to the source code view of the page by selecting the relevant source tab, we can drag and drop components such as this command button directly into a specific location in our page here after the secondary facet. As you can see, a new tag, AMX command button, is added to the source code with default properties. You are free to modify this code in the editor. But alternatively, in the property inspector, seen here on the bottom right, you can see a list of all the properties for this specific component, the command button. In the code editor, if we change a property, for example here, changing the text property to submit, you can see the value is reflected in the property inspector automatically. Alternatively, if we edit a property in the property inspector, indeed even one that doesn't exist in the code, it is automatically added to the source code. Ultimately, these are all kept in sync. So immediately we've created a very simple AMX page, which when we deploy the page and render the output in a simulator or on a device, we can see our new application with the default feature employees and the submit command button we just created. Congratulations, you've just created your first Math AMX user interface. So that's a very high level look at how you build AMX pages and overall in this episode we've talked about AMX pages, also local HTML and remote URL user interface pages that are available to your MAF application. Now of course this is the initial episode on the mobile application framework user interface side and really we've just been looking at things at a high level. In the following episodes, which I hope you'll join us for very soon, we'll dig deeper into AMX components to give you a well-rounded understanding of what they do, how you use them, and overall how to build quick and effective user interfaces in Oracle's mobile application framework. Thanks very much for watching.